A good friend of mine cooked up the idea that as a sea kayaker, you're either a coaster, a circumnavigator, or crosser. The coaster engages with the landscape as they paddle along. This was Flinders Island, the jewel of Bass Strait. Virtually no crime, people who don't lock their doors, and fencing is to keep animals in and not people out. A fishing and farming culture that looks and feels like a young colonial Australia. We would follow the beautiful arc of the Ferny Island archipelago all the way to Tassie, this looming figure on the horizon. Last of my muesli with some couscous. Oh, we day 13. Damn, almost two weeks. And to think that this time next week, Maddie, you'll probably be in your office. For that matter, I might be too. Tuesday next week. You'll be pushing the snooze button for the seventh time. Unemployment's great. Uh, Matt, this is Kerry. We are just approaching Royden Island, over. Um, mate, you probably should come in um, for a coffee because we're, um, we're about half an hour away. I don't know whether this is sand or cheese, dust. Mmm. <laughs> Easy. I've already got that overwhelming feeling of it being a sprint to the finish now because we've got things booked we've got to be at. The ferry, the guy, the pickup guy. You just got to live in each day and not try and be in Saturday already or, or and yet we've got to too. We have to reverse engineer from our Saturday pickup and that might mean a Friday crossing um, to get over to the Tassie mainland, so. Tassie was essentially three good paddle days away in the right conditions, and we had magic weather. We felt compelled to keep going, instead of meeting and engaging with the landscape of Flinders Island. In some regard, you engage more with the landscape when the weather is bad. Heaps of time on your hands, you know, you head inland by default, beyond that 20 metres of coastal fringe. Dolphins were incredible. And then from after that, it was just, I don't know. To be fair, I've been as miserable as I've ever been the last hour on the trip. It's good though, because Bo's not so full of optimism, it can get quite annoying. But he was a little bit grumpy with me, he allowed me to moan a bit. Yeah, I moan. was grumpy. I got a sore bum too, mate. <laughs> After leaving Paul and Craig to have a long lunch with their families, we continued on to Whitemark. We had to get to the grocery store before it closed. Coming into town is typical of the coaster. It's not wilderness, uh, but it's engaging and, and really authentic. It's where people live. And this was the only town that would visit for the whole trip. A sealed road, cars, a pub, the bakery. It looked and felt like a retro American movie. Converted gas station as the supermarket, the hum of air conditioners. Matt checked the weather, I had fresh beans, and Dan shot. The paradox of choice has got me. I've had just the same thing out my kayak for two weeks and now I've got so much choice I'm panicking and I've got 10 minutes to make a decision. So I couldn't find any mints, like beef mints. I've got some mints instead. So I've got a bolognese with these. I'll show you on the chart. Once every three days is sufficient. Because the teeth clean themselves. Have you seen Austin Powers? <laughs> yes, I have. That's good for us Aussies, because if you just have, keep having bad teeth and we keep having good weather and good teeth, we'll get all the chicks. Have you seen yourself? <laughs> <laughs> if these final days had any conflict, it was once again to leave or stay. Yet this time it was whether we used the weather window or not. I felt as if we were half back in the office already. And so we continued to punch south, only being two days from Tassie. Yes. Fresh. And fresh milk. That was quite charming. Laying there this morning about 5.30, hearing the rooster. Look good on you, man. 
waking up the town. Yeah, it's kind of a shame, but we've just got to take advantage of this good weather window. It'd be really nice to have a rest day and go up the Streslecky Peaks and give the body a bit of a rest and then take our time and really have a good sniff around. If you're dialed in as a sea kayaker, you've got your systems nothing. You know, you know where everything is in your boat. You can be super slick. You can be on the water in 20 minutes from waking up, you know, jam down breakfast, this goes there, that goes there. But it's often not the case. And with the more people, you've got five people working through their systems. And so you have to allow a truckload more time, you know. Just to live by my body again, I haven't done this for a while. The selfishness of that is really great, uh, which I think is a needed thing in humans. You need to live by your body and we don't do it anywhere near enough anymore. You learn a lot about the world and yourself and that's what expeditions kind of exaggerate. Everything's pulled to the surface because you can either do today or not based on your decisions and based on your body. I just like the fact you've allowed me now to eat beans in public. <laughs> Walking down the street. Attaboy. Beach, mm. office, conference call, whatever. Yeah. Do you ever meet the Queen? Job interview? Yeah, well, you don't take food in the interview. What are you, what are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got great tan pans. There's nothing cool about a tan. Matty hates it. Look how cool that is. Look how cool I am. Against Matty's white pasty complexion, look how cool I am. I'm happy with my moon tan. <laughs> we were on our way to Clark Island for our final camp. Our sails had been mostly unused so far, paddling into gentle headwinds most of the way. But finally, the weather gods aligned with a following sea, a flood tide and a tail breeze. Tasmania proper. It's been two weeks to this point of the actual journey and months and months and I suppose years leading into it. So to get close to that finish line is quite bizarre. On the last night before I made you cross into Tasmania, after two weeks, this is our reward. Hell of a journey, a beautiful sunset tonight, bloody good meal, lads are laughing, you know. Mice running around all over the joint, we've in invaded their, their home. And the expedition's kind of coming full circle. Whether I like it or not, it's gonna finish probably tomorrow. So today we do our final leg. We depart from Clark Island, as you can see around me, which is just amazing. And we go to Tassie, have a few glasses of wine tonight with Matty and Bo and start to absorb the trip, I guess. I really do, I suppose, look forward to sitting at Muscle Row Bay and, and just thinking about the trip. You know, just dump everything that's in my head that's just taken place. That virtually never happens in an expedition. As soon as that last step or paddle stroke is taken, we jump into a car or a bus or on a plane and we get whisked away. So to be in the place where the trip finishes for two days could be a real peach.
right. Designated. Right, that's ours. Tassie, huh? It's weird calling it the mainland, but it's the Tasmanian mainland. It's just kind of nice. That's good, mate. Well done. Hang on, hug you. I didn't even care if you don't make it. Really good day. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Thanks for letting me on the trip, mate. I cannot help but surprise you. That's okay if it's not too late to move on the way to the other side. Oh my. I cannot help but deny. That's okay if it's not too late to move on the way to the other side. All the adventurers used to come back and have a shave, and their whole trip kind of just ends up in the basin in front of them. But there it is, there's the adventurer going down the drain. God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Shit, I think I need a mirror. <laughs>